Okay, guys. Well, I'm excited about our guest because um, I was a day one <laughs> Jane the Virgin <laughs> watcher. <laughs> And all my friends would be like, girl, but, I'm like, but it's so cute. I like it. I'm here for it. Um, and he has a beautiful, one of the stars of Jane the Virgin. He has a beautiful podcast um, that I really like, the Man Enough podcast, hosted by Justin Baldoni. Welcome to Pod Sauce. Hi, Justin. Hi. How are you? So, so nice to meet you both and be here. Thank you for taking the time. Um, I do love the Man Enough podcast, mainly because just as a black woman, talking about and advocating for our men to be emotive, to be expressive, to be open, to be gentle, and not putting that, shut up, don't cry, mm -hmm. don't do this, that's not, that's not what men do. Um, mm -hmm. We don't do that enough within our community. Um, and I know it's double layered, and I'm sure you'll go into this, um, just with the expectation that we have to be strong, they have to be strong, uh, they can't, show uh, their vulnerability side because the world will already attack them for all of these other layers. Mm -hmm. So I, I was going to say, there's so much about this it's podcast super, that yeah. is informed. Also, just men in general need to listen to mm -hmm. it. But Justin, can you give us like a, a quick synopsis of what your podcast is about for someone who hasn't listened? Thank you for that. You saw me spiraling, right? I was like, no. <laughs> I, I was just well, like, look, she, you guys, she was so into it. I'm like, but let's, I want to hear what you have yeah. to say it's about so your podcast. It's so clear. I mean, just in you guys talking about it, you can see there are layers upon layers and upon layers of yeah. nuance here that all contribute to this conversation. Mm -hmm. So at any given point in time, you can go in any direction. You can go down the black masculinity hole and realize that you are, you know, you are in the middle of an onion and you have to just peel layer by layer by layer off to get to actually the root. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really one of the challenges of the conversation is that it's so nuanced mm -hmm. and it's so specific. Uh, if you've never heard the Man Enough podcast, um, really what it is, what I like to say is that it is a, it is a show about masculinity and hosted by people that are learning in real time. We're not experts. Um, it's myself, my best friend Jamie, who is a black man, and our dear friend Liz Plank, who is a white woman and a feminist. And really what we're doing is unpacking conversations that are millennia old and um, inviting our listeners on and into the journey with us um, without any judgment, without making people feel bad, without telling anyone they have to apologize for being male uh, or for being masculine, if you will, and really trying to hold space and, and have dialogue that really hasn't been had in a way that um, doesn't pit one side against another. Because at the end of the day, we're all human. We're all in this together. And this idea of masculine and feminine, um, while important, the qualities of them have to be separated and turned into human qualities. So we recognize we're all on the same team. We're not against each other. There's a need for all of this stuff. And, um, and it's been politicized, and it's been weaponized, and it's turned into uh, very partisan issues. And it's not. These are human issues. And we want to invite everybody in to go on the journey and learn in real time so that we can all just become not just better men, but better humans. Um, upon doing this podcast, Justin, have you had fresh revelation about what masculinity, the, the expression of masculinity looks like? Oh, I mean, every every episode I learned something new. Mm -hmm. It's one of the challenges of writing a book. You know, I released my book probably six months ago. And one of the, my, one of the scary things about releasing the book was knowing that my opinions are going to change inevitably as I learn more because you never stop learning. Um, and now, you know, here we are 40 episodes into the show and, and I wish I could rewrite my book because I've learned <laughs> so much more. And I'm like, oh, I didn't include that. I didn't talk about that. And so what we're doing now is we're starting, we're starting to have episodes and inviting guests on um, really to, to tackle subjects that I, first of all, want to learn more about that are uncomfortable, that we don't talk about enough, and that I wasn't aware of or didn't include in my work or in my, in my book before. So really, it is learning in real time. And, and we really include ourselves in the conversation. We want to grow and learn, even if that looks like a host being called out or our, or our dear friend Liz Plank being like, guys, you got to step up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why aren't you doing the laundry? You can't be here saying this and you're not doing the laundry. Oh my God. All yeah. kinds of things. <laughs> and, uh, and I can tell you honestly that you know, doing this show now for a year, it has really made a massive impact on my life and 
in my own friendships and relationships and in my marriage. You know, the show, obviously, it's not even that old. You, you guys, you know, like you yeah, said, you're still a, a baby podcast at the end of yeah. the day. But you've had some incredible guests on there, like Matthew McConaughey and Rain Wilson. And mm -hmm. I mean, the list goes on and on. Is there a guest that you had on that was you were shocked either by them being so vulnerable or them opening up more than you would have ever imagined? Is there anyone that sticks out in your mind as just like so many wonderful so guests? many man i was really i was i was really grateful that sean mendez joined us and came on um he's a friend and has been a supporter of this work and i was really blown away how open he was just knowing how big of a fan base he has and how you know people can get so protective over you know him and his girlfriend and all these things and he was he was just hey i've screwed up hey i've done this this is what i'm working on and i was just blown away how honest he was. I, I, I have to say though, my favorite guest, I have two. My favorite two guests are not famous. They're my wife, Emily, and my dad, mm. Sam. Mm -hmm. They've been my favorite guests. And it's arguably been the most personal of the episodes because the conversation that my dad and I had as, as an example is something that I would say most people have never gotten to partake in. Mm -hmm. a, con a real honest conversation with a parent or a father about the things that didn't work, about how they're mm. learning and growing, about resentment and struggle, uh, about forgiveness, mm. right? It mm -hmm. was so beautiful. I cried half the, half the podcast, and I just heard from so many people how healing it was, even from women mm -hmm. who have had terrible relationships with fathers or with men, how healing it was to hear just these two men talk. And then also then my wife, of course, having my wife come on and saying early on in the conversation to her, babe, you don't have to make me look good. And I was terrified to say that, you know, because <laughs> uh, uh, inevitably in a marriage, you want to protect your partner. And this is an instance where I said, look, and I, I've been, I've been saying for years, like I am not on a pedestal. I am, I'm at the bottom. I'm trying to grow and I'm learning and, and, um, and I'm learning in real time. And this was an opportunity for the audience to see like, oh, I got, I got some room to grow. And that's what's so beautiful about it, mm -hmm. is none of us have arrived. None of us are on pedestals. None of us have figured this out. We are all learning every single day. It doesn't matter if you've written books about it or treatises or you're an academic scholar. Like There are areas in your life that you do not have figured out because you're a human being and you're growing and learning. And uh, that makes you human. And that's what we love about the show. I think that's what's so beautiful about the show, though, is that um, the experiences are human and it's not relegated specifically. I mean, it, it does come from a, a, a man's perspective. Being able to, your father being able to be vulnerable enough to hear um, and open enough to receive because I'm sure in his mind he did the best that he could. And you turned uh -huh. out great, but that doesn't mean that there aren't still things under yeah. the current that because of what was you know, instilled on you from him that you didn't have to navigate and work through that were difficult. That yeah, well, difficult. it's not binary. It's not like just because I turned out great doesn't mean that I don't have right. traumas right. or issues or, or frustrations or resentment. And we oftentimes look at, oh, but you turned out great. Yeah. I did my job. <laughs> and it's like, yes, and yes. you really messed this up, mm -hmm. and I'm hurting because of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that we all need to get to a place where we can, in all walks of life, mm -hmm. be willing to step into the fire of uh, constructive feedback being called in and say yep i did that i messed up tell me more how can i grow i want to be better mm -hmm. and there's nowhere that where that's more important um than in that relationship with parents and uh, that was something i learned from my therapist actually it was just this idea of one day my kids are gonna come to me and tell me all the things <laughs> that i've recently told my parents and i need to be ready for that day and say okay you're right oh i uh, told i wish i could go back but I can't, yeah. I'm sorry, you're right. What else, is there anything else on your heart? What else can I do? And I've been really, really proud of my dad for getting to this place after years of being able to have that conversation and hold that space. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that's really all we need to heal from anybody in our lives, you know? 
Mm-hmm. If only all of us men could do that for the women in our lives, Ooh, right? If only all of us white folks it, could Justin, do that. For we the... don't have time. <laughs> huh? Boy, but all, if only, can you imagine what would the world look like if all of us white folks, instead of getting defensive, could do that for all of the black folks and people of color in our lives that we've, you know, had Mm-mm. microaggressions aggressions with? If we could just sit in that fire and recognize that we aren't bad people for making mistakes. Mm-hmm. We've been socialized to believe and act in certain ways. You know, we're, we're, we're not just bad. It's not a binary system mm-hmm. here. The behavior the becomes board. bad when you refuse to hear, hold space, and, and, and re-navigate. You know what I'm saying? And correct, you know. Yeah, but that also comes from, again, this is what we talk about on the podcast, is this also comes from socialization and this idea that our masculinity, if we're talking about men, is something that can either be given or taketh away. Right. <laughs> right? So when you have to prove something, there's no room mm-hmm. for insecurity or for fault or for um or or for admission of wrongdoing Mm -hmm. because that is weakness Mm -hmm. and so when you have to prove it and someone someone can take it away based on action then we do everything we can to make sure that it's deflected that our armor is on and that we don't let anybody in so therefore if somebody does something against us it's their fault Mm -hmm. or no you misinterpreted what i said or whatever we got to make sure that we protect ourselves because it's a it's a it's an all or nothing game we either we're either good men or we're bad men, but that's not the way that the world works. It's shades of gray. What, what I love about your podcast and the conversations you have with your guests are it's it's not just a quick in and out because you like you said you have celebrities. It's not surface level. You actually and activists, not just celebrities, but also yeah. activists and various folks. Yeah, but you dig deep. And you don't let people just come on and do the surface level of a conversation and peace out. I was listening to the Emmanuel uh, Ocho, did yeah, I say his I name right? I thought you were going to go there, yeah. Uh, correctly, and it was such a good podcast because you could tell he had his defenses up for the first half yeah. of the podcast. He was like, oh, I, I don't have any issues. I'm very confident. And it took half a podcast to really get him to a place where he opened up and got real. But it it was... it. it you know, you guys dug and dug and dug, and finally there was that breakthrough moment where you could tell, okay, he's letting his defenses down, he's being honest, he's being real, and it was such a beautiful podcast. And yeah, I'm assuming you. you've it's had one of my favorites. Yeah, so many more like that, and I, I'm just, you know, starting to get into your catalog uh, of your podcast because I just discover it myself. Uh, but it was a beautiful conversation, and I loved that. And so I just wanted to give you some praise because Thank I you. would recommend people <laughs> listening to that episode. Thank yeah. you. And I just want to say, you know, our intention is not to dig and uncover and, like, try to, like, be therapists and, like, well, you're, you know, get into it. That was a really interesting episode because he's a friend. And, um, but we don't know each other that well. And when he came on, we had a whole list of questions to talk about that had nothing to do with anything that we actually talked about. Mm-hmm. But because he was so guarded when he came on the show, um, we just talked about that uh, because we were surprised. And then, and honestly, it was this really beautiful conversation and and I hope a model of how us, how we as men can hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it's not about, you know, calling somebody out and saying like, you know, that they're full of shit or whatever it is. This was a conversation where like, okay, I hear you, but I feel like, what you're saying isn't quite what you mean. Can we go deeper? Mm. Or, but you said that. This doesn't make any sense. How how does that work? Mm. You do this such you do such beautiful work here, but how can you do that and forget about this? And and by the end of it, you know, we hugged and and he he had come to this beautiful place and we texted and he was so grateful. Mm-hmm. And it just showed that like doing the works, you know, being in that fire does not have to be a deeply uncomfortable, painful process. Mm-hmm. Being challenged does not mean that that uh, that you're bad or that you're doing something wrong. This is how we literally how we grow. And the Baha'i Faith, Abdul Baha says that it is through the spark of of differing opinions um, that truth is ignited. Mm-hmm. It's the only place, you, only way you can find truth is, is from two different points of view, and looking at each other and then being forced to look at that and realize like, oh wow, I didn't think about it this way. Oh wow, you're right. And that's what we need more of right now is we need to be listening to each other, being willing to hear what somebody else says instead of just writing it off and believing that they're coming from a from a bad place or that they have a different political view than us. You know, I want to sorry, I want to ask one other question. You know, you've you've talked to so many people. You've had so many guests on your podcast. Is there a universal insecurity that men have that you seem to see as a pattern over and over again that most men struggle with vulnerability? 
<laughs> um, th- th- this is what's coming to mind as, as you, I, mean, I haven't thought about that, but here's what here's what came to mind as you asked that question. Our biggest insecurity across the board is that we have insecurity. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're not allowed to. It doesn't matter what it is. Like it as it doesn't matter. You can literally get like the top twenty Google searches for men, and you could boom pop right into what are our biggest insecurities: <laughs> sex, penis size, you name it, all of it. Erectile dysfunction, body image, weight, muscles, all like <laughs> wealth providing. All, we're not allowed to have certain feelings about anything. Nothing is supposed to bother us. We're supposed to be robots. We're supposed to be impervious, masculine robots focused on a goal, providing, protecting, blah, 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 blah. That's, that's not realistic because we're human beings. All of us have insecurity. So I would argue that the biggest insecurity is the fact that they, they exist, that we have them, and we don't know or have the tools to deal with them. That is I'm deep. Gonna... That is deep, <laughs> Justin. <laughs> Jeez. I'm laughing at both of us because we're acting like <laughs> Southern women in a Baptist church. Yes, Justin, talk about it. <laughs> like, uh, I'm so glad he's not here in person because I feel Those like Those are my favorite churches. Like, I feel like you would have hit point, him. You yeah, would have thrown a shoe at him. Talk about it, Justin. <laughs> so, but you saved yourself. The holy water. I mean, I'm telling you, like you definitely saved yourself. No, I. You know, I'm going to <laughs> left and right. We're like, yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, Justin, I feel like we could literally have you on for another 45 minutes. He's However, back. we can't. Yeah. Um, but I do want to ask you, you know, we are a podcast discovery show, so we're always looking for podcast recommendations from creators like yourself that you create a, mu- a magical show. And so is there other shows that you're listening to that you would like to let people know about? I, uh, I, Glennon Doyle's Untamed is amazing. Um, I love her podcast. I didn't know she had a podcast. You just put Glenn, me on. Yeah, Glennon Doyle has the podcast. I just knew the, the book. Podcast. I just have the book. Um, my buddy Jay Shetty, here's his book. Uh, he's got a beautiful podcast. Um, man, what am I listening to? I, need to? I almost feel like I need to open up all my, my podcasts. I'm also into like biohacking podcasts and things like that. So, uh, you know, I, I listen. I, I dabble with um, certain biohacking podcasts like Ben Greenfield. Um, I like, uh, of course, I like Dax's podcast, Armchair Expert. I think he's... A that's a good one. Interviewer. Yeah, we've talked about that um, one quite a few times on this show. Yeah, uh, there's so there's there's so many. I also I, I'm also really into I like you know I'm a filmmaker, and I love learning from other filmmakers. So I listen to like the DJ podcast, uh, Director's Guild of America podcast, and things like that. Um, and I'm also listening to like random uh, podcasts that have to do with where we are in the world financially. Like I, I'm trying to learn and understand more about cryptocurrency and that. that its effect on the market and all these types of things, um, you know, trying to future proof myself as much as possible. <laughs> I love it. Well, Justin, thank you for yeah. joining us. This has been an awesome conversation. I think it's an eye opening conversation for a lot of men out there mm-hmm. that they don't know how to deal with those feelings. They don't know how society is going to judge them for having feelings. So I think listening to your podcast is a, a must. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's a must for men out there. Thank you. No matter what color you are, what background you come from, it, it is a great podcast. And for anyone that wants to check out the Man Enough podcast, we're going to put up a link on podsauce.com to send people directly there. Um, is there a, is there an episode, well, the episode with your dad, What what is the name of it so we can link to it as well? Yeah, that'll be a uh, good one. You know, if you're just listening, there's a couple. I, I, would say, I would say listen to, first of all, I'd say listen to Alok's episode. Um, Alok goes by they, them. Um, gender non-conforming mm-hmm. um, person, brilliant mind, poet. I would, li- I would say listen to a Lokes episode, listen to my dad, Sam Baldoni's episode. Um, and I think uh, also uh, I, would, I would recommend listening to, there's a special episode we did on my, my best friend who's my podcast host, Jamie Heath, who as a black man talks deeply about his trauma, how he's burned bridges and burned his life to shreds and how he's built it back up. And um, it is a, it, it'll make you cry. Um, I'll check There's apologies in it. There's, it's, it's one of the most stunning acts of vulnerability that I have ever seen um, in a podcast. It's, it's incredible. Awesome. We will throw those links up there. Justin, again, thank you so much. Don't go anywhere, guys. This is Pod Sauce. Thanks, Justin.